why don't we summarize what we have, the summary of our cost flows, and integrate that into the job cost sheet. So what are our three big manufacturing costs? You should be able to ramble these off without a problem at this point. If you're having difficulty with this at this point, you got to go back. You got to go back because it only gets worse from here on in. So we have direct materials. You have direct labor. And we've seen that employee an employee can generate both direct and indirect labor in the same day. We've seen that depending on what they're working on, right? So it's not that we have some employees who are just direct labor and some who are just indirect. Direct materials get recorded in the computer system in a materials requisition form. Direct labor, we've seen, gets recorded on timesheets. This is how we trace it to, those, to, to each job. Ma manufacturing overhead, we don't trace. We generate a predetermined overhead rate and we multiply that by the actual activity of the job, the actual direct labor hours or machine hours or whatever the case is. Once we have those three, we find that we can allocate them on something called a job cost sheet. And when I say sheet, I don't mean a piece of paper. I mean the screen that's up on, on the enterprise resource planning system or the internal accounting system. But they're allocated here. So. Direct materials would show up here. It might look like something like this. The top part might be materials. The layout will be different for each one. I'm just giving you a general example. So we have a total for all the materials we used. That's the important point to keep in mind. Uh, our direct labor hours, because the time sheet will have the job number, so the database will just say how many uh, hours were worked on this job. They're all recorded here with a total for direct labor. And then we have our manufacturing overhead rate, which is multiplied by, let's say, labor hours. We know how many hours it is, so we just multiply it out. And we have a total for manufacturing overhead. Add it all up, we have a total for this job. So we know how much this job cost. So what do we do with that? Well, that total cost gets transferred to finished goods inventory, right? Total finished goods inventory dollar amount. We can divide that number by the amount of units this job produced. And that will give us our dollar cost per unit for inventory. Because keep in mind, we may transfer 1,000 units to finished goods inventory and then sell 300 of them. Well, what's the cost of those 300? We need a per unit inventory cost for that. That's how we get that, right? So let's get into detail. Let's look at some journal entries and some T-accounts, and you thought, whoa, whoa, I got to do journal entries and T-accounts? I thought that was done with. It's never done with, ever. Journal entries and T-accounts. First, though, I want you to try to, um, I'm going to draw something out here, and this will serve uh, you very well if you can remember this. Okay, so let's recall, and I did this before. Purchases flow into raw materials inventory. Purchases flow into the raw materials inventory. Now, raw materials flow out in two ways. They flow out as either direct materials, in which case they go right into work and process, or they flow out as indirect materials, in which case they go into manufacturing overhead. And what goes into manufacturing overhead are the actual indirect materials. We know that. We can, whatever comes out of raw materials inventory has a dollar value. It either goes directly into something and it's traceable, or it goes into manufacturing overhead as untraceable, but it'll have a dollar cost. Then we have labor. Direct labor goes right into work and process, and the actual indirect labor goes into manufacturing overhead. So we see that work and process has direct materials, traceable. Direct labor, traceable. Manufacturing overhead gets indirect materials and indirect labor. Work in process then gets finished, transferred to finished goods. This is called the cost of goods manufactured. Finished goods then become sales. This is called, this arrow here is called cost of goods sold. And all of this here, let's draw a little dotted line across this. But we won't include sales or cost of goods sold. Notice that. We're not including that. Just all of this stuff in here. 
this box, all of these are balance sheet only. So whenever we're doing a journal entry for one of those arrows inside that box, you cannot use an income statement account. They must all be balance sheet accounts, all of them. Notice I didn't draw an arrow from manufacturing overhead to work in process. I will draw that out. Let's, we'll get to that slowly. First, let's do the first arrow. Purchases to raw materials inventory. What does that look like? Well, raw materials inventory increases and accounts payable increases. Why accounts payable? Because it must be a balance sheet account. So, here's the T account for raw materials inventory. We may have some beginning balance in there. We'll just put, uh, we may, we may, we'll put that in there and we'll record that goes there and we won't do one for accounts payable. I'm just going to do the inventory accounts here. Let's do the second arrow, raw materials. We have direct and indirect. So let's say that we have both. If we have direct materials, it goes into work in process. If we have indirect materials, it goes into manufacturing overhead and we reduce the amount we have in our raw materials inventory account. There it is right there. So we need some T accounts. Let's do one for manufacturing overhead. And we'll do another one for, um, we'll put our dollar sign there to show that it goes in there. And we'll do another one for work in process. And there we go. And we credit raw materials because it's leaving raw materials. Now, look at our work in process. In our work in process, we may have some sub T accounts. This one might be for job A and so on and so on and so on. A bunch of jobs all the way to job N and being the nth one, whatever that happens to be, job N. So the amount that went into work in process has to be allocated to jobs. We have to say, well, since it's traceable, it went somewhere. So there might be uh, uh, a, a, a beyond the beginning balance. Let's take this number, dollar sign down here. And X dollars of that might have gone to job A. And Y dollars of it might have gone to job N. So that the amount that went into work in process, this dollar amount, can be traced to each job. It has to equal whatever went to job A and whatever went to job N. They're all in particular jobs. So work in process is really just a holding account for all of the jobs that we do. Let's see what we do with labor. Remember labor, we have direct labor and we have indirect labor. So if we, have, if we incur labor charges, clearly... We're going to increase work in process. Indirect labor will increase actual manufacturing overhead costs. And we need a balance sheet account. Don't charge this to, uh, to the income statement. We need a balance sheet account, so we'll just charge it to wages payable. Do not charge it as salaries expense. That would be wrong. So wrong, in fact, that you shouldn't even get part marks for any of that because it's so wrong. So here we are, manufacturing overhead gets increased, work in process gets increased. Now notice that this dollar sign that went in work in process also gets allocated across all the jobs. This is all done by computer system, right? You know, you know the idea of having somebody at the end of the day sit there and enter in all these, these transactions by hand, that's gone. If that's the job you're training for, forget it, it's not there. That's gone. So all the jobs will receive, everything that goes into work in process goes to each of these particular jobs. So if you took all the jobs out of work in process, there'd be nothing in work in process. I mean, that makes sense both ways, right? What about just general manufacturing overhead, rent, depreciation, utilities, insurance, and so on and so on. All of these things are just general manufacturing overhead. Well, they increase manufacturing overhead, the actual costs, and let's call it accounts payable. Why do we not call it rent expense and utilities expense? Because it cannot be an income statement account. It must be a balance sheet account. It's only an income statement account when it's sold and it's recorded as a cost of goods sold. That's the only time it shows up on the income statement. But before that, it is a balance sheet account. Now, let's finish this last arrow, this manufacturing overhead arrow. 
What do we do with that? How do we get it out of there into work in process? Well, that is next. Remember, I said I'm going to do this step by step. So we understand everything so far. Let's see if we can't figure this one out. Music